I'm joined. Perfect. So welcome to the art overview. Uh, we're going to have, my, my name is Eddie Duffy. I'm with uh, admissions. I'm an admissions counselor here. I'm going to be kind of overseeing this today. So we're going to turn it over to our art faculty and our art students. They're going to run through uh, kind of an overview of our, of our art uh, program here. Uh, and then towards the end, we are going to have some time for a Q&A session. So if you guys do have any questions, I think we've had already some submitted uh, that I have received. So we're going to get to that after. And uh, yeah, after this, we can turn, we now turn it over to uh, Professor Warmo. Hello, good evening. I, um, I'm going to start by introducing myself. My name is Professor Chris Longwell. I am a uh, teach ceramics, uh, printmaking, art history, and the senior seminar. And I run the George Waters Art Gallery here on campus. And I just like to let everybody who's uh, representing Elmira College to um, introduce themselves real quick. Derek? Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us this evening. And uh, my name is Derek Chalfon, as Chris said. I teach all levels of sculpture, uh, furniture design, product design, uh, contemporary art history, and also teach uh, a first year seminar course in the fall. I'm uh, Professor Aaron Kather. I teach uh, drawing and painting classes at the college. Uh, so that's sort of, you know, a lot of the 2D besides printmaking uh, stuff that Chris does or electronic stuff that will hear about in a second. Um, yeah, so I think that's good. Oh, I'm Jan Kather and I teach um, all of the digital art classes. I also, as Derek has talked about, teach a uh, FYS class. And this year coming up, it's going to be dealing with film. So maybe that will be interesting to some of you. Okay, students, Alex. Um, hi everyone, my name is Alex Taylor. Um, I'm a senior at Elmira College. Um, I'm an art education major, so I do a lot of education courses on top of art courses. So I'm doing my student teaching right now and trying to get my art education certification. Hello everyone, my name is Hollis Berry. I'm also an art major. I specialize in product design and I also wrestle. Amaya? Um, hello, my name is Amaya. I am also a senior. Um, I am currently a nursing major, but with an art minor. Um, and I'm an RA on campus. We, uh, Sarah? Hello, I'm Sarah McGrain. Uh, I'm also a senior uh, and I'm specializing in ceramics. Okay. So, um, hello everyone. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen and pull up a PowerPoint and uh, there we go. Uh, bear with me. We're gonna rip through this stuff pretty quick. Um, our program at Omar College. There's our there's our agenda. We'll get through that. So, in the art program, we have four concentrations: uh, art therapy. Uh, I will uh, just sort of briefly read through this. So, you know, what what does an art therapist do? How does an art therapist work? Um, it's a it's basically a combination between um, psych courses. But you're an art major and you have uh, 12, maybe 15 um, uh, credit hours in psychology. And uh, we have collaborated with an art therapist who teaches, who, who works uh, clinically here in Elmira. Um, so that's, uh, that's the art therapy. Uh, it's, a, it's a really growing field. Um, it's, it's increasing in demand and um, According to recruiter.com, uh, it's supposed to grow, have a growth of 27% over the next few years. Um, the digital art and product design, I'm going to turn that over to Derek to talk about. 
Derek, you wanna? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Chris. Um, we're in digital art and product design. Um, it's essentially using digital technology to assist um, the designer, you, the student, in uh, making products. Here is, for the most part, on, a, on, a, on an introductory level, most students are just making uh, one uh, of an object, sometimes two, like or limited edition. So, since we're making prototypes for objects um, that could potentially be uh, run on uh, limited edition or ideally in the in the big picture uh, mass produced. So I, I call the students in product design or, or sculptors or even people who take classes with Chris in ceramics, essentially you're a form giver, you're giving form to various materials through various processes. And some of those uh, processes are, are utilizing um, computer um, assisted uh, technology. All right, Jan, do you want to talk sure. about? I, yeah, so I, I would just say that as far as uh, digital art and graphic design, we have a, a lab that has 20 uh, iMac computers that have Adobe software installed. And that's pretty much what we use to create our um, 2D graphic design work. We also make some video. Most of my students use their phones. so. Uh, you don't have to worry about having a lot of equipment. Um, we pretty much use what we have in our pocket. Um, I would just say that um, we go from analog photography, and maybe uh, Hollis will talk a little bit about that today. He was in the dark room. But for the most part, the real world is um, using graphic design digitally. So the focus is more and more on uh, that. And the Thing that both Derek and I, our, our areas in um, uh, digital art can be a minor that uh, is really kind of separate from the art major. So if you just wanted to major uh, or, or focus on digital, that allows you to be like a marketing major or uh, you have some other uh, area that, that we would study um, and along with digital. So um, that's all I'm going to say for now. And there, I'm sure there'll be some questions. Okay, um, so as far as studio art, chime in, um, Aaron, Derek, Jan, uh, the studio art uh, is, in, you're really focusing on drawing, painting, ceramics, printmaking, photography, and the studio practice and developing um, your skills, your ideas as an art major. Um, and not necessarily, uh, you know, all, all three, the art therapy, digital art, uh, product design, digital art, graphic design, they're, you're all art majors, but studio art kind of really is focused on maybe more your, ex, your personal expression in that kind of uh, aspect. Would anyone like to add into that? Yeah, I just would say like how uh, Sarah McGrain that we heard from a little bit ago, she talked about being a ceramics concentration. So studio art sounds a little bit more general, but I think students who do studio art do tend to uh, sort of focus in a certain area. Uh, and I do, I like that list at the bottom. It really shows there are really a lot of jobs that you could get from just a sort of a studio art track, even though it sounds less uh, career oriented than some of the other paths. Yeah, it's more more open. Um, thanks, Aaron. Um, I'm not advancing. There we go. So I just want to go through and show you some of the EC facilities. So this is the sculpture studio, and you can see that um, it's a fully equipped uh, studio. There's a lot of woodworking um, um, equipment. Derek, would you like to? Yeah, sure. Um, really, I mean, as you walk in the studio here, you can see this is actually the studio that I'm in right now. Um, that's, I think, a better shot of an overview. But essentially, anything you'd want to do in wood, fabrication, carving, um, lathe turning work, which Hollis is doing right now, um, you can do. But in this space, we also carve stone. We have a, a, an actual. Uh, a, about a two foot by three feet by 20 inch deep glass kiln. So we can do some slumping and fusing in that. Um, it's uh, nearly brand new. Um, and we have uh, 
capabilities to, to do some larger work or more dirty work outside where sometimes when students are stone carving, the weather uh, prohibits, um, we do some stone carving out there. We also have an outdoor facility where we do uh, bronze and metal casting, which uh, Chris has put together uh, some slides to show you that later. This is the primary um, in, indoor studio space for sculpture and 3D work. Uh, uh, down the hall from this, um, on the other side of ceramics, we have a metal fabrication studio where we have two MIG welders, a TIG welder, uh, a plasma cutter where you can do small and large fabrication. And we also do, uh, we clean up our uh, metal castings in that space too. We also have a, a wet saw uh, set up indoors where we uh, cut down our stone for stone carving. Awesome. I would just say too, like that, Derek, you just went through and listed a whole bunch of stuff. But the way I think I would say that if someone wasn't as like into sculpture as you are, is like you have the tools, you can make like almost anything out of any material with the facilities that, that you have. So, yeah. 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 Awesome. Great. And here are some shots of uh, some outdoor. This uh, on the far left is a uh, molten bronze about to be poured um there's a the center photo is um um in process a raku firing so we're firing ceramics in a specific kiln um and then on the right was a um a term three class in which we uh built a kiln we built the raku kiln and uh worked on some other kiln projects but we also built a uh a, a wood-fired pizza oven and so we have this outside, outside um, uh, facility that has a lot of like stuff that burns and makes fire and smoke and does cool effects on materials. <laughs> uh, ceramic studio, um, give you a shot there. Uh, students working, uh, hand building coil stuff. You see our wheels, there's the glaze room. We have, uh, so that's the setup there. And uh, Aaron, would you like to talk about the the painting drawing studios? Yeah, so this is uh, on the left is the, the painting studio. And then in the middle, the, uh, that's the drawing studio. So I think you can see a really beautiful space, lots of open space, uh, nice windows, good ventilation and airflow, especially in the painting studio is something important if you're working with oil paints. Um, we were just talking a, a little bit before we started here about stretching canvases, which is a project that uh, some students are working on right now. So uh, yeah, a lot of fun things in the paint studio and uh, drawing. I think you guys can also see some really nice uh, space to draw in and uh, yeah, sort of focus more in paper. And it's a little cleaner, I would say, in the, the drawing studio, so there's less wet paint. Yeah. And then on the end is printmaking. So Chris, you can- uh, Yeah, so we have a, a variety of presses. And if you don't know about printmaking, it's, you know, you do, um, you carve into uh, linoleum, which is a semi-flexible material or wood. Um, you etch in copper, or you engrave in something. So you make like a plate, ink it, and then run it through presses and create images. So so you can make multiples you do one um one object and then you can make multiples from that um let's see and jan would you like to talk about uh okay i can um one of the things that when aaron was talking about the drawing studio uh, we have a comic book class and that class meets in the drawing studio and they do a lot of drawing but then they uh, have some of their classes in what we call Lab C, which as you can see, there are the uh, IMATs and uh, actually I'm there helping a student uh, in the center. But um, uh, I would like us to think about, uh, you know, Derek is talking about using digital with sculpture, but every one of us uh, uses the, the digital facilities. So even if you're in drawing or painting, uh, um, Chris, uh, particularly, I think, in his uh, printmaking class, will come over and use the computers. Uh, so you will definitely sort of have a go back and forth between those buildings. Uh, Sarah McGrain is one of the students here today that is, uh, is also was in the darkroom with me this morning. 
Um, and so she has a lot of experience with the computer. Uh, she had a different class with me called uh, Electronic Art Studio. And uh, she's used some of those skills in a uh, internship that she will maybe talk about too. So just um, that these digital skills can be transferred in a lot of different ways. Yeah. And we will talk about more as, as this goes on. Yeah, and so what I wanna do is like go through the slides of all the facilities and I wanna ask um, all the students to comment on their perspective of that, uh, of what we're just showing here. Um, George Waters Gallery is um, the opportunities to show your work. We have uh, a really great gallery. Um, it's a beautiful space. Um, uh, we have three shows uh, a year that are exclusively for students. So you get to exhibit three times a year. Um, and also with that, uh, you get to learn uh, as an art major, kind of not a not mandatory, but sort of hopefully you would be interested in working in the gallery, uh, hanging artwork, um, learning how to set up an exhibition. It's a great skill. And I um, I have, uh, I just filled out a, or a, responded to a call from a, um, a former student who graduated last year, who's got a job uh, now working in a gallery and um, um, very exciting. She's, she's really excited about it. And um, yeah, so these are uh, kind of transferable skills. We don't have a degree in gallery preparation and design, but we prepare students to do that. Uh, there's another shot of the gallery. Um, another additional thing that we offer is uh, in, in another building outside of FACET, which is the art building and not in the a library where the uh, digital art and photography studios are um, and, and the upper floor of uh, Coles Hall is um, a studio where you can have a semi-private area to work. Um, and uh, there's that's Alex Taylor and Aaron on the left. And then uh, it's sort of the middle one is Alex's studio set up way over there in front of the light. And then on the right is a view outside, so you're you're way up high. And um, originally, when this was all women's college, this was where um, the art studios were, uh, where they paint. One Coles Hall was the only building. So I'd like to um, invite Alex, Hollis, Amaya, and Sarah to comment. What do you guys? Uh, how? What's your perspective on? you know, the facilities at Elmira College. Start, Amaya. Um, I would like to say that just in general, um, the facilities itself is very open and very allowing of creativity and kind of pushes you to definitely think abstractly with the materials that you have and making sure that you can create anything that you want. Um, and I do have to also add on that the art staff is very supportive and very flexible in being able for all of the nursing, I'm sorry, not the nursing, <laughs> nursing's on my brain, the art um, majors and minors to get their majors and minors done. Um, because I am a nursing major, sometimes it's a little bit difficult with clinicals in class, but I've worked very one-on-one -on -one with the staff in order to get all my classes done, in order to still produce art to get placed in the galleries, and even being able to be a part of the senior art show at the end. Awesome. All right, Alex, I'm working on the right down the line as I see you guys on the screen. Um, I think one of the best things about the facilities here is the 24 hour access that you're allowed. So even if you're not an art major and you're in an art class, you still have that opportunity to go into these places like whenever you need to. So throughout the week, I don't really have time to go into the studio as much as I'd like. So on the weekends, I'm able to go in there, you know, throughout the day, whenever I need. So to have that 24 hour access to get done 
you know, the projects that you need to do, whether it's for class or your own personal projects. Um, I feel like that opportunity isn't always available at other schools. So to me, that's a huge plus. I'm going to bounce off um, Amaya here with the creative freedom is like, I really like it to be able to like, they really like, I guess, open up, open it up to you. So where you're able to really like think about what you want to do and like how to do it. And they are super supportive. The staff here are super supportive when it comes to like questions and like flexibility. So that's like my big thing. Awesome. Sarah? Um, I would have to agree with Alex in that the availability of the facilities is nice because as a commuter, um, you can come and go really as you please. Um, to get work done that you weren't able to get done during class. Excellent. Awesome. Um, thank you. I just wanted to, this is slide is about internships. We have a variety of internships and anybody can chime in here. I'd like to hear uh, the students input as far as like what their experience is. Um, these are various um, um, organizations, uh, museums, uh, art, art uh, co-ops that are in our area that, um, that we collaborate with and students can work um, in a variety of ways and a variety of uh, different stuff uh, to earn internships and really get some great experience. So. Um, would anybody like to comment on that? Um, I'll jump in quick because the first one there, Community Arts of Elmira. Um, my freshman year, I think it was November, and I started working with them. So it was like that quick that I already had the opportunity to be a part of the Elmira community um, in an art setting. So, and after my first, I they do a lot of murals around Elmira. So after my first mural, ever since then, like I've worked a lot with them with whether it's volunteer events or, you know, your own personal projects, they give, they give so many opportunities um, to so many Elmira College students. So that was a huge one for me. Thanks, Alex. What else? Sarah, how, where are your, where are you? Um... You're at Community Arts as well, I think. Yeah, I am also interning at Community Arts of Elmira. The people there are very, very nice and very supportive. And you learn a lot and you meet a lot of local artists. They give you a lot of connections. Awesome. I just wanted to say too, uh, we did have um, an another uh, student who graduated last year, who interned at the Arnett Art Museum. Uh, and I think Chris, eventually you're gonna talk about sort of employment opportunities, but she's now working at the Arnett Art Museum uh, full time. Um, so this really can be a good way to make connections and get experience, but is also potentially, um, you know, something that can really give you experience in sort of a, a work environment and lead to employment. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think ultimately, you know, you work in, a, you, you go to school, you're in the academic environment and it's sort of like a isolated thing. And then when you have that opportunity to go to uh, some place and, and experience your passion, your idea, you know, what you're interested in, in, a, in another environment, it just opens up so many other opportunities. And um, um I will say the the transformation center is a relatively new one that is sort of a, a place for um, youth to come after school. They do have like an art. Um, we have a lot of students that intern there through psychology and human services, but they also have like a little art room that we have uh, students intern in. And the Amara Psychiatric Center is relatively a new one too. We, um, that's our art therapist 
um, who's teaching the intro to art therapy class is uh, an employee there and he um, uh, will have will start setting up internships there so you can practice art therapy at um, you know, at, at an actual um, psychiatric center where uh, that's what you might be doing so if I anyone can, else it, yeah um, I could say that um, the the student that uh, Aaron was talking about that now is employed at the Arnett Art Museum she actually uh, received two scholarships at the Corning Museum of Glass, which is just about 20 minutes away. And there are some, occasionally some inter opportunities uh, there as well. So uh, the Corning Museum of Glass, it's just a world renowned, internationally known art museum, like one of the finest glass museums in the world. So uh, students, Elmira College students have taken weekend classes there as well. So that's, a, that's an opportunity to look into. Yeah, so it's just kind of like, this is what fit on one slide, but yeah, I'm even thinking we've had students intern at the Rockwell Museum. We have, um, yeah. And we've had students that are do things not locally, like that maybe don't necessarily live right in the area. We had a student, uh, was that at the Cape Cod Museum, Chris? I think we had a student intern a yeah. few years ago. So this is yep. definitely a, a, a really- uh, We've had them at the uh, Cornell Johnson Museum of Art and other ones that, you know, there, there's a lot. This is a, uh, what do they say, tip of the iceberg kind of thing. These are our, exactly. these are our, um, our go-to places because of, um, the first three, or no, the first two are in walking distance from Elmira and then the Transformation Center and the Psych Center are walking distance. Uh, 171 and the Arts of the Southern Finger Lakes, they're out of Corning and they're yeah, about a 15, 10 minute, 15 minute drive from uh, the campus. So, huh, my, um, my slide isn't advancing. Huh. Hold on here. Well, Technical difficulties, please stand by. Um, I don't know why it is not. There we go. Finally, I think my screen went to sleep. Um, so what can you do with art? Where does an art degree take you? Here's just a, like, again, the tip of the iceberg. Here's a few things that we've, um, you know, through looking at, oh, you know, career, um, uh, career stuff on the internet. These are the type of things that you can do. And these are also things that our students have gone on to do. So um, I like to see, uh, you know, uh, Derek, Jan, Aaron, is there anything you'd like to add here? Like uh, we have, like I mentioned, we have one, uh, two, we've, I've had maybe four or five students within the last uh, five years that have ended up working in galleries. Um, and what other stuff, Derek? I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I can say that um, in addition to these uh, places that you can go get employed, um, some of our students have gone on right into grad school or they stay out of here. And so with the degree from Elmira College, you can go to other institutions and pursue your master of arts or master of fine arts in any in any field, any concentration that you would want to, whether it's uh, painting, drawing, printmaking, photography, everything that we've talked about. So that's that's an uh, an opportunity that a lot of students that have left here have gone on to do. Yeah, Jan. Um. Well. Um. I was thinking that Derek was going to talk about our student who was a hockey player who is now at RIT and um, working in product design, but he um, loved being able to be at Elmira College and get play his sport and also be an art major and then immediately was accepted at RIT. So he's the first person that comes to my mind as far as uh, somebody who's who's gone on. And he took, uh, you know, several classes with me. He, I, we could look at his website the, for, where he built the website in my class uh, and, and moved on from that. The person who works in content creation right now at Elmira College uh, had my class. And when she graduated, this is just two years ago, I guess, 
um, I told the, the people in that department to check out her website, which featured all her work, and she got a job right away. Uh, and as Aaron has said, we, we, you know, we're talking about um, our person at the Arnett Art Museum. She um, is uh, looking at other jobs as well. She's, her, her family's moved to Ithaca, and so she's building up her career experience at the Arnett Art Museum, but she's looking to possibly move closer to her, her family. So, you know, once you start being employed, you can get experience, but you also make contacts with people, uh, which I think is just a really important thing. Uh, and I don't know, Chris, you could talk about all the school teachers. We've had so many of our graduates yeah. who are in the public yeah. schools, but you go ahead, because you were also a public school teacher at one point. Yeah, well, it was a uh, it was private, but uh, high school. I taught for a little while for four years. But the um, uh, yeah, we have so many of our visual art majors, which is the the term for art education major, have gone on and are teaching locally and um, in a lot of other different areas in uh, of uh, the the country. And um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a really great and rewarding career. Um, we have, I, I can't even begin to mention how many are out there. Like Alex is going to be teaching art. And uh, yeah, like I mentioned before, art gallery um, employment, uh, that's, a, that's a lot of fun is, is installing exhibitions and um, working in, you know, a contemporary gallery is a really fun kind of thing to do. Um, but, uh, you know, um, for sake of time, these are all- I was all... just gonna briefly uh, mention, Chris, I, I have heard, I think there seems like there's a lot of uh, school teachers retiring. So that does seem like there's a lot of job opportunities in that yeah. field right now. But I also just, and this is a little bit of a, a tangent, but even, um, you know, every year there's a, or usually every year there's an alumni art show uh, that was in the summer last year. And I just was really impressed by the number of uh, students, even, you know, sort of recent students and, and students from a long time ago that had done art at Elmira and really turned it into a, a career and a, a life passion. So I think art is not something that is going to disappear and, and go out of fashion, you know, like um, if you went to school 20 years ago and were learning about computers, you know, that's a field that has changed so much. If you kind of did that and then weren't following with the field, all of your information would be sort of out of date at this point. And art, I think, is something that is never going to go away and is never really going to go out of date, I would say. Yeah, and it's funny. I just thought we have there is an alum. He, I mean, this is he graduated in the seventies, but he um, makes uh, super realistic sculptures, and he's got sculptures in um, uh, the hockey hall of fame, the basketball hall of fame, and like golf, you know, St. Andrews golf, you know, stuff. So yeah, we've we've people out there doing a lot of different things and a lot of a lot of great stuff so but i like to turn it over now to a little q and a if anybody would like to throw some questions up here i'm going to stop sharing my screen and i don't know at this point uh eddie do you want to take over with the q and a absolutely so uh, if anyone has any questions, you can feel free to uh, throw them in the chat and then we can, um, I can ask those questions to the panel. Um, we did have a few that were submitted before this. So uh, if no one has any questions right now, um, I can start us off with the first one we got, um, which is, I believe this is probably a little bit more geared towards our current students. Um, says a uh, question, uh, what are some of your favorite classes that you've taken in and outside of the art program? Um, for me, one of the first that comes to mind, sorry, did someone say something? Okay. Um, one of my favorite classes I took was Professor Aaron Cather's Drawing and Painting from Nature. 
So that class really got me out of my comfort zone with watercolor. I was always kind of afraid of watercolor. I thought it was like pretty difficult, um, but you, you would go outside for class because it was in the spring term and you'd go around the community and you'd go to all these different places and be outside drawing and painting in nature. So that was one of my favorite classes and I learned a lot. And for me, I would say it was my first design class from last year. It was a super fun class, got to learn a lot about how to make things. And then a class outside art would be my FOS class with again, Derek Shelfont. It's just, he's a great teacher. So it was fun all around. For me, it probably had to be um, painting um, with Professor Aaron Kather, just because like in high school, I thought I sucked at painting and then I got like relatively good at it. And um, we mostly used acrylic paint. So when we got to painting and I got to use like oil paint, it was kind of a really cool experience being able to compare the differences between them and the different techniques and also really um, like demonstrate like my use of like shadow and contrast um, between the different blends. I really enjoyed the, um, the ceramics classes. So we got to learn a whole bunch of different ways to use clay and not just the wheel. We did uh, pinch pots and slab building and a coil building. And I've done a lot of coil built pots now. Do you guys have any other classes besides art classes? I know, Hollis, you answered that. Do you guys have any other ones you really liked? I took a, um, I believe it was like a gender class, like women in history class with Alexa Yasekevich. And I really enjoyed that class because it talked about not only um, the history of women like in America, but also specifically like in Elmira. So I particularly enjoyed like learning about the city that the college is in. Um. One of my favorite classes that wasn't an art class was one of my worst grades that I've gotten here, but it was a bio class. But you learned like so much of just like everything and whether it was different foods, uh, cause it kind of, the focus was foods and drinks and you know, how to grow crops and just nature. So even though I struggled academically in it i feel like i took away a whole lot of like life knowledge from it so to me that was a great class i took a plants and peoples class um and i really enjoyed it yeah that one <laughs> so you did you learn so much about history and um uh I can't think of the plant science word right now, but you learn a lot about plants too. And it was just a really nice class. We do have a, uh, a live question. Um, and the question is, can students participate in two or more art classes, uh, such as both ceramics and painting? The answer, short answer is yes, definitely. Um, we encourage everyone to uh, expand and be diverse. So um, oftentimes students are taking a painting class in the same semester they're taking a sculpture class or a photography class. So yes, you're, um, you're and you're required to take a variety of art. Uh, media, um, you know, you you have to for to complete the major in any area, you have to be somewhat diverse. And then also, we want you to specify and have an area of sort of, of a concentration. But diversity is good. So yes. And maybe for some of the students, have you guys 
had experiences taking because I, you know, not having been a student, I don't know if you have had that experience. What did you think of taking multiple art classes at the same time? For, for me specifically, like right now, I'm not taking like like the drawing and like contemporary art classes right now, but I am taking art history, taking two of them right now. And I like it. I think they're very like two different classes, but they still kind of line up. Like a lot of the artists that I'm wearing, um, that I'm reading about right now and like Black artists in America, um, some of the styles that they've done are based off of artists that I'm also learning about in the other art history class with um, Professor Chris Longwell. How about you guys? I, I saw you were discussing um, for studio art. Did you have, oh, sorry, Sarah, were you gonna say something? Yeah. Um, so I'm taking a bunch of, so, painting, uh, ceramics, and photography right now. And uh, it's, it's really fun that you get to be very creative. Um, and it's, it's more fun than taking like classes where you have to write essays for every class. So the workload is easier. <laughs> And I, and I think by easier, um, it's because you're doing something you want to do. But I'll tell you, Sarah is um, in the studio and working on her stuff probably longer and more time consuming than any essay you could write. But it's not as maybe painful as writing the essay. <laughs> Am I right, Sarah? Yeah, it's a lot more fun to be in the studio than it is to write an essay. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would say something similar, if I could put Hollis on the spot, the way Hollis can produce three-dimensional objects, he can produce a, a, a sculpture, for example, relatively quickly. Um, I'm not sure if it would be the same with a particular paper at this moment in time. Um, what do you say, Hollis? Do you enjoy writing papers or creating art? Or can you talk about that a little bit? I definitely enjoy creating art a lot more than writing papers. That's no doubt about it. I'm currently taking also like three different art classes. I'm taking photography, drawing, and then a product design class. And I just, I, it's a lot better than like a sociology class. You like, you're kind of like, you have to put hard work in like everything you do. And I just like to put my hard work in something that I enjoy most of the time. The thing I noticed too about students is, I think there's a sort of a synergy, like if you're spending more time with art and you're thinking about art more and you're having more art conversations, sort of uh, kind of like what Amaya was talking about, even with art history, that it, it just, you kind of are a little more immersed in it. And so something maybe that you uh, are, are learning in photography can relate to another 2D class like uh, drawing. And I think it can, you know, I sort of see that like, oh, this person is, understands composition and is thinking about that has already sort of thought about that sort of problem of how do you arrange things in an image from photography in a drawing class so uh, yeah I think it's a, a strength to be able to do that we have another live question as well um, <clears throat> this question is how much can materials for different art classes cost or estimated to be Well, uh, it varies from class to class, I'll say, but um, like I'll, this, for ceramics, the materials fee is, is a flat $75. And um, that's unlimited use of clay, glazes, firings. So you could use uh, $75 worth or you could use a uh, thousand and seventy five dollars worth if you were really ambitious so um it's a it's yeah i mean our our um i think our my, at least from my perspective in my courses the materials fees are pretty low but clay isn't is expensive 
um, but I'll let others share. I would say for me, uh, oil paint tends to be the most expensive one just because the, the paints are expensive, the brushes are expensive, and then, you know, the canvases uh, and the facilities, you know, the, the um, terpenoid or different mediums, materials you're using. Uh, so that one I, I think is 200. And then some of the other ones are, are a lot cheaper. So like Alex talked about the drawing and painting from nature class, and that uh, I think is uh maybe just a 25 dollar fee so you know that it's mainly a sketchbook and then you have some pencils and watercolor and, and some different things so there's quite a range but i just to sort of echo what chris is saying like those paints are you know accessible like you could really do a, a lot of painting if you went to buy um you know the the paints that we're buying that you can use for the class i mean it's thousands of dollars worth of uh materials so um, I, I, if I could say um, for a furniture design class, for example, we have um, a, a set lab fee, which helps defray the cost of some of our consumables from sandpaper to um, uh, which are the abrasives um, and blades and things like that that do get consumed by the students, not eating, but using. Um, but uh, in addition to that, depending on the size of, of furniture that one designs, you could design a small table for $25, but I've had students spend in excess of two or three hundred dollars on a single table. But for example, Alex Taylor is using his painting cart next door. But these I, I help students understand these are ultimately investments because you're making an, a, 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 a one of a kind design that you, the students, have designed. And that singular object was going to last you potentially a lifetime because of the level of craft. Um, and the student that Professor Jan Cather mentioned um, went on to grad school in part based on the portfolio that he created in classes that he took with all of us. So you, you can look at those material fees ultimately as an investment if you want to look at it like that, because all students from uh, Professor Longwell's class, uh, um, Professor Cather, uh, uh, um, and, and my own classes. Um, you, you are building up your portfolio. So you're ultimately investing in your future, whether you want to be an educator or those other professions that we have talked about. So um, it, it, it varies widely in furniture design and sculpture. It's similar as well, but um, in sculpture, you do have a set lab fee um, and that does cover all the costs of stone and clay um, and wood and other materials that we use in the studio for each project. I really do wish we had invited Mr. Perucci onto the call because uh, he he would have absolutely loved uh, to, to be on this, uh, to dive into some of the projects he was able to do after after leaving Elmira. I know uh, just by <clears throat> working with him and being uh, friends with him that uh, he was able to even kind of use that product design uh, that we have talked about here today to kind of 3D model and start to uh, design really uh, a new generation of hockey home. Like you had mentioned, he was a hockey player. Uh, he was able to kind of combine those two passions that he had here at school in grad school. So it really is uh, a lot that you can really dive into it with, but I'll definitely be sure to make sure that we, we invite him next time we do this. Um, any other Q and A questions from the group? because I do have one last one that we can end on unless we have any others from the live group. Uh, the last question that we can end on um, is, it's again, probably geared mostly here towards our students. Um, what made you choose art at Elmira College as your major? I personally chose like art as my minor because I've just really been interested in art ever since elementary school and I've taken art classes in middle school and high school and I kind of really wanted to do that at Elmira College and the staff has been very supportive and very like they'll recognize your talent and your effort and they'll try and cultivate that and I just really appreciated my entire experience at Elmira College in the art program. 
Um, I think a big reason for me was when I was visiting Elmira College, I saw student work, almost what seemed like all over campus. So the promotion that the school does of student work is like kind of incredible. Um, it's almost like every, every building you go to on campus has some sort of artwork or showcase that a student has done. So you can tell that they take pride in their own students and they support the, the art department kind of completely. Sarah, I think you didn't start as an art major. I, did you wanna uh, answer? Uh, sure. So I started off as a psych major uh, and then I realized that I would much rather be an artist than a psychiatrist, so I changed. <laughs> because I've loved art since I was little, and uh, you guys do such a good job of making all of the um, careers like bringing them to the student's attention. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely do uh, see all of the artwork that has been displayed uh, this year. We, uh, we were lucky enough to actually get some here in the admissions house. Um, still negotiating with our director if I can move some pieces to my office. That's still an ongoing negotiation, so I might need to try to slip someone a 20 here over in the art department to maybe liven up uh, the rest of my office. Um, but unless we have any other Q&A questions from the attendees, um, I would like to thank everyone for your time. Uh, thank you guys for joining, and thank you to the attendees for attending. And I hope we were able to uh, kind of give you guys a really good over, overview here of our art program here at Elmira College. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.